Is it Dan? Morning. We got our security. Um, we're gonna go and meet the mayor. He's got his police chief here with him too. So, hi, hi Leanne Young. Hi. Nice to meet you, hi, Mayor. Thank you so much for meeting us. Um, I don't usually roll with such a big posse, but here we are. <laughs> How are you doing? Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to, nice meet, to meet, you. meet you. So we're here in Abbotsford. This is the Lonzo Park and Ride, and Abbotsford police have called this the most violent encampment in the city. Are you concerned about some of the language that's being used, calling this the most violent encampment, you know, that, that we've seen? Well, there, there's stigma around that. Yes, there is, there is a component of the criminal element um, that has been a part of this encampment that has caused a lot of trauma for a lot of the vulnerable population. Right, but that language about it being a violent encampment, um, I mean, it's coming from, you're, you're on the police board, it's coming from the police. Well, because the police are first responders and they're getting calls because of people with machetes and axes and, and a lot of violence that's going on. So, I mean, that is very accurate. And when I hear that fire department cannot go into this encampment without police escort, that causes me great concern. Um, because our firefighters are our and first you've responders. Got an with you here today, so and we've got the police escort here. So the mayor wasn't shy about pointing out the safety issues here or using the word violent to describe this encampment. Um, you can certainly see there have been dangerous situations. This is uh, the remnant of a major fire that just happened the other week. But I'm curious to know what residents here think of that label. So let's go talk to them. Yeah, let's go see your place, Paul. This is Paul's place. How We're are you just doing, gonna... sir? Who's that? How are you? Nice to see you. It's a police chief. Yeah. yeah, I was actually just talking to a gentleman a moment ago who said, you know, he was here for a couple days and was shot in the, in the leg. Somebody he didn't know came into his place. So, you know, we what we know is since 2015, our violent crime rates have quadrupled in this immediate area. And, you know, for our officers, for the first responders here, it's a huge issue. But, of course, also for gentlemen like this who are, you know, trying to find a safe place to be and stay. And, and uh, you know, this, this isn't a safe place. Do you feel there's violence in this area? No. But there's, the people are all on drugs. They're all spaced out. Most of them are zombies, literally. This is your this is your trailer. This is mine. Yeah. Um, how long you been here for? About four months, I guess. Oh, four months. Maybe now. longer. And where right. were you before this? Well, I was living on a piece of property up at the end of By Road. I had to be off the property there because he was selling it. I had nowhere to go. What's life been like? Mm, well, except that I'm kind of scared of these some of these zombies here. Um, but they don't, they don't bother me, you know, uh, but it's not comfortable. It's, I don't feel safe at all, you know, and, and uh, everybody tells me this is a dangerous place to be. But you said you haven't experienced any incidents other no, than the one No, I haven't so crime. far. I mean, I've seen things go on. I've seen Do you them. think it's because people are telling you that it's unsafe that you're feeling That's, that? Yeah, I think more of that than the people here themselves. Because I've had two or three people who aren't quite so spaced out tell me that I'm here, I'm not doing any harm, I'm safe here. I don't know how true it is, because it could change overnight. This is not a long-term solution. Well, no, it is not. I'll be out here tomorrow if I can find a place to go, because I really don't like it here. This is not comfortable at all. Anybody home? See, that one's all burnt up at the end, right? Yeah. You can kind of see it behind this big, huge one with the pillow. You right. can see the black roof. I think that's the one. What happened? Do you know down. what happened that night? I don't know. Somebody probably just lit it on fire, just oh, screwing around, you know. So what's it been like? You've been here for about two weeks? Yeah, I think about two weeks. Yeah, I got the trailer from my boyfriend's uncle. The prices of rentals just skyrocketed. My boyfriend was in a car accident and got a brain injury. And so he couldn't go back to his other job. So he's on, he's on disability. I'm normally a truck driver, but I've been looking after him for the last couple of years. What would you want people to know about what your circumstances are like? You know, it, people see a mess like that and then all of a sudden everybody here is just tagged as uh, that, that were dirty and that were criminals and, and addicts. And that's not, it's not, that's just not the case. Like, 
we're, there's a lot more behind the scenes than what you see on the, on the outside, you know? I feel like you look like a hard ass, but you're kind of a softie. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I am. Cops said that um, they're pulling out axes, machetes. Of course, but people use them as tools. We, we have fires. What yeah, else are we going to use them for? How do we keep ourselves warm? And yeah. We don't have Everything. a door at night. Like, we don't have heat, nothing like that. So, yeah, of course we're going to have axes and machetes. That's what we use to cut the wood. Like, we don't use it on each other. At the, at the end of the day, we're pretty much all, like, a big family in the end. You know, we all look out for each other. What did okay. you want people to know? Um, we're not all that bad. Every one of us, even you guys, are one paycheck away from being right here. Or when your house burns down, you're right here, too. How did you start using? Um, I've been using since I was young. Like, How old you? I was nine when I started using hard drugs. I was eight when I started smoking weed or something, seven and a half or something, when I started smoking uh, weed. Trish, uh, what so my, my older brother and my older sister were bad influences, but they both passed, so that influence has gone on my life anyway. Trish, you got family still? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I have a brother, uh, two younger brothers, two younger sisters, but none of them talk to me. I don't know what I have anymore. My family is what I have here. So every person we've talked to here says they disagree with the viewpoint that this encampment is violent. In fact, some of them say they feel like they've got a bit of a community here and they're trying to watch each other's backs. But we know there have been crimes that have come about. Um, in fact, we're about to go and talk to one business owner. He experienced a crime pretty much directly as a result of some of the people who were living here and he's got a story to share. Yeah, Bob's no, just, breakfast and coffee. What yeah. do you make for breakfast, I Bob? I just do breakfast sandwiches. Okay. And yeah. where you're parked, I can almost just see the Lonzo Park and Ride right over there. Yeah. I yeah. actually can see you're, it from there. A little bit. Yeah. 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 Um, so what's it been like uh, being situated so close to that area, which has such a reputation? Yeah. I was setting up back in February. I uh, actually had a generator stolen. So that was really disheartening. Um, but in the weeks following, a couple of guys actually came over from that community, apologized. Uh, they had heard what had happened and, and just um, wanted me to, sh to assure me that, um, you know, I didn't have anything to worry about and nothing like that would happen again. So. Okay, that um, seems, I, I'm surprised to hear that. Were you? Were yeah, you? I was shocked. Yeah. Um, you know, that wasn't my, my initial reaction was, I was pretty upset. Yeah, so I, I guess I have. I guess you could say mixed feelings about what's going on over there. What are the other feelings? Um, I think I have a lot of sympathy um, and a lot of empathy for what's going on in that community. Um, you know, you hear a lot of stories. It seems like it's pretty unsafe down there for the people living there. Um, but I don't think that's their first choice of where they want to be. Policymakers say that they are listening and you know we reached out to the Minister of Housing Ravi Kalon and he said he wasn't available for an interview but he did send us this statement. Um, it's pretty long and I'll sum it up for you. Their goal is to try and find long-term housing for people so it looks like they won't be moving anybody off of here until then and there are currently about two dozen people um, living between here and a nearby encampment and he says that this is the lowest number it's been since 2020. Their temporary plan, though, is to try and move a nearby shelter at Abbotsford Riverside to around here so that they can build more housing there, but no timeline on when that will happen. And that means for the folks who are living here, they're going to be here because they have nowhere else to go until then.